I V M. So, folks, welcome to Better Better. I'm your host, Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter, and this is the Inter Mile Special. Yes, for the very first time on my podcast. I have with me a loyalty and reward and rewards management company, and that too, a really large one. I have with me Manish Tureja, MD and CEO at Intermiles. Manish, welcome to Paisa Paisa. Thank you so much for doing this. This is the first time we've got Intermiles on our show. So I want to take a step back, right, and introduce Intermiles to our listeners because I know it's got a really long history, and I think that there's a lot to it that we should use as a background to start to introduce the entire concept. So. Welcome to Pesa Vesa and tell us about Intermiles and the history. Sure. Firstly, Anupam, thank you for having me and uh, really pleasure to be talking to you. Uh, to give to answer your question, what is Intermiles? Uh, and I'll possibly give a very simple answer. Intermiles is a digital currency with a built-in engagement model and supported by a self-sustaining captive ecosystem. Now, that's something which uh, not everybody. Uh, your listeners will not understand, but it is a loyalty program and which a commerce capability enabled with it. So what we have seen is that Intermiles was earlier Jet Privilege, which had transitioned into uh, a currency platform, which allows uh, members to engage with alternate currencies like Intermiles in a more uh, customer engagement uh, uh, platform uh, methodology, which essentially means that for whatever customers, members do on our platform, the reward currency will always be intermiles. So whether you dine, whether you shop, you book a flight, you book a hotel, you do any activity, whether it is uh, uh, taking taking steps, uh, we'll talk about more about that. That is all about uh, getting you rewarded with the currency of intermiles. So in short, it's a loyalty program with a commerce capability built in. Wonderful. So, Manish, let's talk about the Consumer Sentiment Index report. I hear that Intermiles has has done a lot of research. I mean, I think that the pandemic would have just totally finished off uh, you know, people's desire to travel. But things are evolving. It's been, what, six, seven months and things have slowly started to open up. Enough people taking flights, going abroad, uh, even or traveling within India. Globally, I believe flights are now kind of coming back. So talk to us about the insights that, you know, that have been identified by Intermiles uh, in their Consumer Sentiment Index report. Sure. So I think uh, uh, COVID, as we all know, has impacted travel and hospitality industry in a very big way. Uh, and for impacted in a way where it will see the impact for foreseeable future. So we wanted to actually understand uh, our members' sentiment, uh, and we carried out this uh, research. So while consumers have marginally uh, become marginally more conservative uh, concerning non-essential spends uh, and have been uh, looking at things differently, but uh, on, the, on the travel side, what we realized is that uh, uh, as travel started to open up, there was a cautious enthusiasm and optimism which we saw. So in the report, uh, this was basically a report uh, done after a survey with over 8,000 members uh, and some interesting insights which have come. Uh, to name a few, 60% uh, of Indians look at traveling domestically before Feb 2021. While 9% were ready to pack their bags within the month of September, that's the time when we did the survey uh, was there. Uh, there is definitely intent to travel, which was uh, uh, visible in the result. Uh, only 20% of the respondents said they were wary of traveling within India, uh, with 14% saying they would not cross the borders without a vaccine. And a mere 6% said they do not currently have any travel on their mind. Uh, it's not on their mind at all. Uh, obviously, business travel has, uh, while business travel was always expected to be amongst the first to recover, uh, but close to 60% of the respondents wanted to travel internationally and domestically. Then the want is there, the need is there, but for leisure, relaxation, and other uh, travel with family and friends, which we call it as a VFR traffic, visiting friends and relatives. This can be credited to the fact that the lockdown has in, uh, uh, 
that for the lockdown, the Indians who have majorly been confined to their homes and localities for close to six, seven months, there's some sort of a revenge which is there that I want to kind of get back on a vacation, yeah. a short getaway, etc. Uh, close to 20% of the respondent chose to travel solo for their leisure getaway, uh, which is also a key insight which we saw. Uh, predictably, um, safety and hygiene factors have been called out by our respondents to be the most paramount importance when considering undertaking travel in the next one year or so. Uh, this is closely followed by the preference for destination, uh, which is also combined benefits of uh, uh, ease of access, value for money uh, from members' choice perspective. So if I have to just say the, the last set of individuals, what we have identified is a revenge travel, uh, rejuvenation breaks, are predicted to see some sort of uptake and we are seeing some trends uh, which have started to come on our platform. So by and large, these are the top headlines for the Consumer Sentiment Index report. Very interesting. So Manish, how has Intermails evolved during this pandemic? I mean, before, say, in Jan, Feb, things were normal and you would fly, you would get your reward points and that's what you were done. But obviously, First, you had flights being banned, and now as slowly flights are starting to take off, as you said, people are also now interested in uh, in traveling whenever it's safe or whenever it's possible. Some of them are already traveling now as, uh, you know, if they have something that's urgent or necessary for which they have to travel. So how has Intermiles evolved during this entire pandemic? You know, for, for example, if I look at uh, a comparison outside the restaurants which were shut, some of them are now converting into essential stores and stuff like that. So how does does Intermiles also offer opportunities across these essential services or say utility solutions or anything of that sort? Yes, very good question, Anupam, and thanks for asking that. See, Intermiles was born out of, uh, as a frequent fire program, but we have pivoted towards a more everyday lifestyle program for members. And with our ecosystem of partnership which we have curated and developed over the last so many years and transitioned by creating platforms for those experiences, uh, we are basically uh, uh, seeking or, at, or appealing to the experience seekers. Now, in that context, uh, we actually follow the customer life cycle to track how from morning to evening uh, where are the opportunities where we can connect with the cons uh, consumers, our members, and make an impact, as well as create an opportunity to fulfill their aspiration and make the entire experience more memorable and rewarding, and reward being the key element around it. So while uh, travel was the key component of it, over the last few years, we have built several initiatives to kind of build different platforms around it whether it is credit card, whether it is insurance, whether it is dining uh, and, and other allied categories. But specifically, if you look at uh, during the pandemic, uh, in the business of loyalty, customer experience is top priority. We all know that. And, and our agile, we, we are agile in our business strategies and we constantly reinventing. And this has been proven. If you look at last three, four years, we have built several capabilities uh, and platform and partnership, whether it is Indian oil or whether dining, uh, different ecosystem, even insurance uh, for that matter. Uh, so we kept evolving uh, towards uh, ensuring that how do we stay relevant and create a more uh, engagement with our members, uh, thus create a more fulfilling and rewarding experience for our, for our members. So even during the lockdown to stay relevant, we introduced a series of uh, initiatives to empower them with most of their time which they had and, and time was a currency we were playing with. Uh, to grow the relationship with us. So whether it is creating Intermiles uh, everyday concept, rewarding them for taking steps uh, and leaving a, a, a healthy lifestyle, uh, for playing games, uh, engaging them on the mobile app uh, for various initiatives, for watching videos, for watching healthy uh, content. Uh, that was the route which we had taken. We actually launched a mobile application, uh, mobile app early this year. Uh, it was actually last week of February, first week of March when we launched it and, uh, in, in end of March, we faced with pandemic. So, Talk uh, about time. <laughs> yeah. So we saw some incurring response without spending too much, uh, money, because 
there was no point in spending money because what do we what do we tell so quickly adapting to build certain capabilities in 2 3 months uh worked along with testing few ideas and killing few ones and working with which brought along this whole concept of intermiles every day how do we make towards making basically intermiles earning an everyday habit during the post lockdown and and uh, uh, going forward we initiated range of fun and engaging activities under this uh, with spin the wheel quizzes games and one of the surveys which we talked about is also part of was part of that and therefore with that came the engagement every day number of people who started engaging downloading uh, kept on increasing this was possible because we did rapid prototyping experimenting with different ideas and deploying the use cases all this happened in the last 6 months wow how so it any examples that you that that you could walk us through you know that any offers that you had running any 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 you know stuff that worked with with the uh, with your users yeah sure so uh, one of the uh, intermiles every day was a very powerful uh, thought which we tested so we did a thinkathon within our company several ideas were there two three winning ideas were uh, brought in and quickly prototyped and brought along the intermiles every day uh, is was one such idea the intermiles every day our members are empowered with quick and easy way to earn intermiles uh, daily uh whether it is uh, uh, evolving their habit and or the constraints in the which they were working so rewarding members to stay at home was one such thought which we came came up with when there was a lockdown uh, similarly creating uh, engaging content uh, we partnered with tedx gateway and rewarded members to watch the tedx gateway uh, webinars every saturday sunday and there were many uh, thousands of people who were uh, engaged with that content and asked questions and uh, wrote to us that they really liked it similarly uh, the 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 idea we started off by rewarding people to stay at stay indoors went on to create a platform for step to miles so a healthy lifestyle building healthy lifestyles you take steps and you earn miles so uh, you today your counter is 2000 step tomorrow your counter is 10000 step so creating more gamification for members to create a healthy lifestyle was one such idea which uh, went along likewise uh, quizzes and spin the wheel were a few of the things which kind of uh, engage with our members and 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 that has led to whole new bunch of ideas which are currently work in progress lovely i hope you know probably there you will have a few for the festive season coming Uh, which is due soon. So, in your uh, for facing, ju- just to answer the question on the festive season, uh-huh. also we did something uh, which we called miles frenzy. Uh, okay. So we built opportunity to accumulate inter miles every day, which through the inter miles every day, but also created an opportunity with a partner network uh, for shopping uh, across uh, Amazon, Flipkart, and over two thousand five hundred merchant options which are available. uh with 1000 plus uh, partner platform through which one can do so all this is embedded in the intermiles app so if you if you log in through intermiles app and shop to your uh with your favorite partner or amazon or flipkart uh we brought this alive through a promotion called miles frenzy a first ever festive sales uh promotion where intermiles members had the opportunity to multiply their miles earning when booking flights hotel shopping online so it was a complete package which was brought alive very interesting and and what been the experience so far what do you think you know what kind of value are you adding to members uh, daily lifestyle needs how has been the response so far so number of people who engaged were more than two times in some cases it was 3x the response which we have received uh the idea was uh largely to create more active engagement with our members and the promotion delivered it bang on more than delivered very interesting how 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 do you see the rest of this you know you you, you call it calendar year financial year or whatever or the year mid term panning out now do you think that at least what we saw in terms of travel that thing that 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 lockdown had affected do you think that's going to start the unlocking is actually helping people to go out that much more 
Are they coming out your survey? Uh, the index, you said that there is there, but on the ground, do you see that happening? So while, see, the uh, the survey gave us the intent, the the uh, the desire to do is there, but it's not necessarily going to be translated in an in action. And if you look at the industry data, uh, mm. that is uh, showing a different picture altogether. So if you were to look at uh, flights data, which is readily available from the DGCA website, and if you look at this traffic, traffic has returned to almost 35% uh, of the pre-COVID levels on the domestic market. International is only 12% of the pre-COVID level. So there is still significant amount of uh, uh, confidence building measure which is required from industry for members to be able to plan their travel and confidently uh, travel both domestically and internationally. But what is uh, a bigger worry, and I think uh, largely uh, uh, which is which is coming across is discretionary domestic travel segment, which is largely in the business and, and institutional, MICE, uh, which is meeting incentives, corporates and exhibitions related leisure and foreign travelers on, on domestic network, that which accounted almost 50% of the market in the pre-COVID level is likely to not come back anytime soon or would wait for the cons- confidence will come back only after uh, the control on the virus is there or some deployment of vaccine, which is widespread. So that's where I would look at. Uh, but the other element is also that the the lo- unlocking has not been uh, fairly been effective because every state, every city has its own mechanics. Oh, yeah. So yeah. once we see, if you actually want to travel, I don't know whether yeah. uh, did you try making a booking, you have to first check where you are going, what is the uh, the quarantine procedures there in every state and every city has something or the other uniqueness about it. So once we ease some of these elements, then the customer confidence will also increase. So there's a long road ahead, but sure, slowly, slowly things are going to change, at least on the domestic side. International, I, I think it's going to take a long while. Yeah, and look, what it help me here, uh, from whatever I've read, Air travel is actually safe. I mean, if you just look at the sitting in the plane part, provided you take precautions, obviously, like a mask and all that stuff. So what is what is the science or what does the data say out there in, the, in terms of stuff like air circulation and the protocols that are there? So IATA has very categorically been publishing this uh, uh, stats uh, and the airlines are all using latest equipment and standards uh, that the air quality is safe. Uh, the number of people who have uh, contacted uh, a virus while traveling, in, sitting inside the aircraft, is uh, negligible uh, to even uh, talk about. Mm-hmm. But it is sure the uh, see in the in the in the travel side of it, because the international travel is governed by traffic rights, and when everything came to a grinding halt, the traffic rights have been suspended. What has now come across is a bubble agreement. A bubble agreement is coming in certain form or shape with certain countries. So the free movement has been suspended. And that is also causing uh, the entire uh, uh, confusion in the minds of customers that earlier I was free to travel, now I'm not free. The government themselves has suspended travel. Therefore, it is not safe to travel, whether it is domestic or international. So the confidence building measure have to be taken in a collaborative manner, not just by the government, but also by the industry players, whether it is airport or airlines or hotels. And and whole whole, uh, association together has to form to bring the confidence back that, okay, we we all have to live with it. There are precautions have to be taken. Everybody has to take precautions. And those precautions are in place. But... It's the customer confidence which will take time to build up, but there's a lot of work which needs to go in in collaborating and communicating that to each and every customer. It's kind of strange, right? Because you have the international travel with the leaders happening. Like I believe the Secretary of State of the US, Mike Pompeo, is in India right now. And a lot of, so globally, there's a lot of traveling happen, happening uh, uh, among the top leaders and stuff. So 
I don't know, you know, hopefully in the next few weeks or next few months, I hope that this, these, these like you mentioned, the protocols start happening. It becomes more, you know, the procedures become less onerous because right now I think you have to reach, what, two, three hours before your flight, even if you want to take a domestic flight? Yeah, you, you have to reach, reach at least two hours before. Wow. Uh, international, uh, you have to check various uh, regulation. In some cases, you have to do the test. So, see, the airlines are taking all necessary precautions. And, ha- I mean, hats off to all the airlines who are operating under such tough circumstances when the flights are only 60 65% full. They are going out to make sure, from a safety standard perspective, everybody is doing their best and impeccable. And the standards which have been there are being followed. Uh, we need to communicate that more effectively and reach out to all the customers to understand and, and to make sure they, they, they understand and make it easier. From an easier perspective, it's a regulatory framework, which the easing of restriction, because the the health is a state subject. Every every state has to make sure it is, make it easier for everybody and, and use a consistent policy and framework rather than everybody doing their own thing. So I think, it is going to take some time. I think the trial, the learning has been there, uh, and some of these uh, are, are going back in the way things are evolving. Sure, well, folks. That's a that that is the first part of our episode, the Intermile special with Manish Suryam, MD and CEO. At Intermiles. When we come back on the other side, we'll tell you how Intermiles works and how you can make use of it. Right. So don't worry. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Want to wish you all a happy Diwali. Hope you had a great festive season. It's been a great week in terms of the kinds of guests we've had and the kind of conversations we've had on the network this week. Do definitely check some of these things out. On This Round's On Me with Gauri Devidayal, she had a great conversation with Gauri Maharara, who's one of the best-known chefs in the world. It was just absolutely riveting. Do check that out. On States of Anarchy, Hamsini Hariran spoke about chronicling India's different wars. Again, really interesting episode. Check that out. Ashton had a very interesting episode on his show, The Habit Coach. It was called I Don't Feel Like Doing Anything. It's about how to overcome malaise just generally, and I thought really, really interesting stuff. Kumi Vayana was the guest on Cyrus Says on Monday's episode last week, and uh, she's an educator. And my God, it was such a fascinating conversation talking about the way education functions in India and some of the changes she'd like to see. Just really, really interesting stuff. Do give that a listen. On Uncle Please Sit, Anupam Manur was there with Joel and Tushar talking about the Indian economy, part one of a two-part series. Second part will be out this week. You should definitely check that out. Lastly, I want to talk to you all about the Filter Coffee podcast. Karthik Nagarajan, who hosts that show, was on a little bit of a break. He's back with a banger of an episode. It is with Himura Maya, who used to run Landmark Stores, and they talk about the culture of bookstores and quizzing and all kinds of stuff. Really interesting conversation. Do check that out. And with that, let me get you back to your show. And welcome back to the Intermiles special. My guest, Manish Sureja, MD and CEO at Intermiles. Manish, welcome back. Can you introduce Intermiles to us? You know, I'm so... I remember when I used to fly long back and I used to fly jet, it used to be such a good experience. And that loyalty program, I think I, well, I, I didn't travel much, so I think I was probably just at the blue level. But yeah, just give us a bit of a background as to how Intermiles works, the various tire, how you, uh, how you earn to our, to our listeners. Sure. So I think, uh, uh, as, as, as I'd mentioned, Intermiles started off as a frequent flyer program. Uh, and typical frequent flyer program, you have various uh, miles as a reward currency, but also a recognition element to it, based on the number of uh, flights you travel, how frequently you travel, uh, and the class which you travel determines whether you are silver, gold, platinum members. This is how most of the uh, frequent flyer programs would work. But as as I mentioned earlier, we have been growing this into a more uh, ubiquitous and alternate currency and alternate currency platform. So for the last five years, we've established a clear and differentiated growth uh, strategy and approach to emerge as a, a currency of choice, an alternate currency of choice. And why alternate currency? Because uh, cashbacks can only drive up to a point when beyond that you need another form of engagement. And Intermiles is that currency. It is ubiquitous in nature because we have solved a lot of uh, problems. And if we, if we look at typically uh, traditional loyalty programs, what challenges they have faced. Uh, limited frequency, 
uh, a large number of standalone programs are there where you have multiple points which are spread over uh, in different categories with different brands and merchants. Uh, and therefore, uh, you don't frequently use them. You Sometimes you don't even know about it. Attainability. Attainability, while fuel groceries do solve the frequency to some extent because you, you use them frequently, uh, but the earning is less and therefore you end up using them for cashbacks or discounts and therefore you don't reach an attainable reward. So reward is not meaningful, which brings to the third point around sustaining these rewards. All captive loyalty programs, whether tasked with driving sales or engagement are perceived as cost and therefore do not have the legs to sustain the reward beyond a point. We saw this a uh, long time back and, and carved the program separately from the airline to run it as a separate business to create a more sustainable operation by creating an ecosystem of partners uh, along with it. So we solve for fungibility, we solve for uh, the attainability and create a meaningful reward bouquet around it. So that's the crux of it. So Intermiles today is basically serving that uh, niche customers who are uh, looking for meaningful rewards, and we are able to serve their uh, serve them across the different industry segments. So, uh, with over 150 or different types of partner engagement, we have we actually have engaging uh, platforms for whether you are a traveler or you are a housewife or you are somebody who is running your own business. Different products and different pro- proposition coming around to reward you with intermiles as a currency. And this currency can then you, can be used for uh, flights, for hotels, for hotel stays. You can redeem it for hotel stays. You can redeem it for gift items, buying it on our reward store. You can also redeem it for uh, uh, filling a fuel or dining. So the currency becomes ubiquitous in terms of usage and the fungibility uh, problem is solved. How do we do this is basically creating different platforms and allowing members to uh, accumulate those miles. And we started to reward members for their loyalty and their usage. So you go into uh, from base member to a red tier or to uh, uh, silver, gold, platinum tier, depending on the number of miles which you collect. And this is across anything which you do. So if you buy a flight or a hotel, book a hotel, or use a co-brand credit card, you multiply your earning purely because you're buying a flight plus also using credit card. It's a double rewards which are there. So different ways in which members collect these miles and we have a whole host of partnership which are there right from Swiggy to Amazon to Flipkart to Zivave. Members are able to earn miles while shopping and if they pay through the the co-brand credit card, they get bonus miles as well. Also, we have introduced uh, learning partnerships in the education ed tech sector with Udemy, Economist, TEDx, and Udonix. So the whole idea is to cover the entire lifestyle of our members, and therefore Intermiles becomes the the loyalty and engagement platform for our lifestyle for our members. With over close to 10 million members across multiple categories with 1,000 plus partners, Intermiles presents a valuable new new age digital currency of engagement which gives members exciting meaningful relevant experience and our objective is very clear uh, anupam our the core purpose why we exist is to fulfill members aspirations with a memorable and rewarding experiences so everything what we do revolves around this very interesting Marik. can you just walk us through the products that you've got when i say products i mean co-branded right because there's a very big market out there for people who want the best deals and that's probably just gone up with this pandemic. Uh, every time there's an on- online sale, you'll have some offer for this credit card, some offer for that credit card. There's something or the other happening. So how does uh, Intermiles work in terms of the product that you have? I mean, say for example, now I, I don't have an Intermiles account. Can I just download the app and sign up and then maybe apply for a co-branded credit card and start earning? 
So how does yes. this entire process work? So just walk us through step by step if you can. Sure, sure. So if you if you actually become a member, download the app and sign up, and you will become a member. You will be given a login ID and a password, which is so actually it's not like the old time where you would fly and then that flight would give you miles. So that now you can actually just start off without buying an air ticket. Just maybe I'm stuck in the old era. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's that's exactly right. Uh, you don't need to be flying you can just download the app and uh, uh, become a member and your first activity would be to to spin the wheel and if you're lucky you will get probably 75 miles 100 miles 25 miles depending on what the uh, luck is uh, also answer a few questions you will be rewarded with it then you have the whole plethora of activities to explore from if you're planning your travel book your travel you will earn miles those collected miles can then be used for redemption of uh, a flight ticket across any airline worldwide. Uh, similarly for hotels. Now to accelerate their uh, accelerate your earning, we have bank partnerships with HFC Bank, ICICI Bank, uh, and Indescent Bank, where we have co-branded credit cards where you can apply for the cards depending on what type of card we have various cards to choose from including we have a debit card partnership with HDFC Bank. So you, you can apply for a, uh, those products and you get a... Oh, a no, no, sorry, because I'll just interrupt you out there. Sorry. So if I'm, I'm asking because I'm an HDFC Bank customer and my usual default uh, debit card does not have that. So you're saying that if I am an HDFC Bank uh, customer and I want an Intermiles branded debit card, I can actually go in for that. Yes, you can go it for it. And for okay. everything you spend on that particular uh, debit card, you will earn miles, into miles. Okay. For every, for every spend. So different different propositions are there. If For every 100 rupees spent, you get two miles, three miles, four miles, depending on uh, different product proposition which are there. So oh. that's one way to look at it. The other, the other is uh, when you are uh, uh, with our different partnerships which we have on shopping side of it. Uh, you come through the shopping on the mobile app and select a partner, let's say Amazon or Flipkart. You open the app, you go to that partner through the app, you can shop and you will be rewarded with intermiles. Uh, you, what you get will be the same as what you would get uh, on Amazon or Flipkart. But because you're going through the intermiles, for everything you, which you do, you will get on, uh, you will be rewarded with intermiles. So two questions here, Manish. First is that uh, application of credit card for a, for a co-branded credit card, how does that happen? Do I have to do it from the app or is, is it a separate procedure? Do I have to give my credit score how, or how does that work? Or do I just give my mobile number or PAN number or something? So right now, right now, this journey is not digitized, but in another two months or so, this journey is going to be digitized completely. Uh, at the moment, we are basically converting all the existing jet and jet privilege cards to intermiles and members are uh, in their uh, in their welcome kits are being sent out some of them have already received it some are in their uh, being fulfilled so people are getting their new uh, the new cards in their mail uh, the application for new cards uh, process follows the same process if you go to the bank but through the intermiles app the the application process will start in in a couple of months or so Sure. Uh, and like you said, you need to go via intermiles to the Amazon or the Flipkart uh, website to get the miles and the accelerated programs, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, the, the, right. the whole thought process has been that for whatever a member does with us, he or she will get rewarded with intermiles. Uh, so uh, whether you'd shop through us, whether you you book a, a restaurant or you order through Swiggy, when you come through us, everything what you do, you because you're an Intermiles member, you get recognized and rewarded with Intermiles as a currency. Sure. And coming to the currency part, that's the last question here uh, on on this episode. I also heard you saying this just before in the second part that why should consumers start viewing loyalty and reward programs, you know, and even say digital currencies? I, I would think that loyalty programs and reward points are kind of digital currencies. As part of the personal finance planning, I, I think that's really interesting. What's your perspective on that? So, uh, see, the loyalty and rewards have been uh, popular among uh, Indian consumers and an increasing popularity has been there. From integrating programs with 
different types of uh, partnership whether the food delivery or essential goods uh, the in, the the expanding opportunity for engagement has also been uh, increasing at the end of the day if you look at what what are we trying to do is reward the customer for either their time or money now people who have less time have uh money and they need to manage their money and make the best out of it so we appeal to those set of customers to make the best out of it so the question is either you have time then you look for the best deals and uh, uh look for uh discounts and go through the process of collecting those discount vouchers and using it but a lot of customers don't have that time and therefore if you use your money smartly using the cobrand cards and through the through the program you will get rewarded for every single transaction what you do and that's where the beauty lies at. so if somebody is spending 25000 rupees a month uh on a digital product he or she can get a meaningful reward uh in a in 6 to 8 months time a free flight or a free hotel stay that's so powerful this program is why how we do it is with bringing the ecosystem together and and making it encourage encouraging it the members to use it by giving rewards on both sides of the transaction number 2 moving forward this sector is expected to go beyond because members are going to look for more uh, personalized uh, activity and data plays a very important element around we value the data and because we know you we recognize you and also suggest you that if you do this you will get better value and that's what makes it so with the technology and with mobile app and knowing so anupam to give you an example for you as a member we have close to about 1500 different data points now those 1500 data points give us the insight for us to engage with you at the right time with the right messaging plus also ensure that you get the best out of it and and the best for you is to make sure you get rewarded with unified currency every time otherwise it is very difficult to keep track of different offers which are coming different uh banks offering different merchants offering how do you make use of that so if the unified currency makes it easier you don't have to worry about it because most of our members don't have time uh and time is a very precious commodity uh, which we all deal with very interesting but anish i wish you i wish intermiles all the very best i know that i am really looking forward to going back to flying regularly whether it is for leisure whether it is for business and i hope that uh, i'm pretty sure that a lot of our listeners out there are also looking to get back to travel and whatever you know it's <laughs> i feel scared to use our normal nowadays but whatever we can you know and i hope that that just goes on getting better and better as times go by so folks that is a wrap on this really special episode the first time that i've got a loyalty and rewards management company on the show the intermile special my guest manish dureja md and ceo at intermile manish thank you so much for doing this for our listeners thank you anupam pleasure having you thank you and listeners if you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the ivm network you can listen to us on the ivm podcast app or ivmpodcast.com you can also follow us on our social media we are ivm podcast on twitter and instagram if you want to reach out to me i am p50 on twitter and thank you so much for listening to this abes no material on the show should be considered as financial advice the material on the show is for informational purposes only please consult a financial advisor before taking any investment decision पेश खिदमत है आपकी शान में हमारे अंजुमन से हाय आई एम सदफ एंड आई एम अर्शद खाने का इतिहास इकोनॉमिक्स पॉलिसी साइकोलॉजी सब है मेन्यू पर ओनली ऑन द नान कारी पॉडकास्ट एवरी वेंसडे सिर्फ आईवीएम पॉडकास्ट ऐप या वेबसाइट पर या फिर जहां से भी आप अपने पॉडकास्ट सुनते हो Advertising is dead. Yep, you heard me right. Advertising is dead. We're all in the content business now. Let's not call it news, TV, radio, etc., etc. It's all content, and we're in the middle of this weirdly exciting phase where all the borders and lines that have been drawn over decades has been swept away by this lovely thing called the internet. We're a show where we don't dwell on just the stuff that is now, but rather the wider stuff about advertising, media, content, and the whole goddamn circus surrounding it. 
tune in every Tuesday for our weekly unboxing of the mystery box we used to call advertising. I'm Varun Dugirala, co-founder and content chief at The Glitch, and this is my new podcast, Advertising is Dead. <laughs> <laughs>